so from there you turned that was obviously a turning point uh you found someone with think with basically the same Christian beliefs, except for this one big one that he accepted homosexuality. Yeah, he was okay with himself, but he was really closeted. And he was Baptist and I was Pentecostal, but we got over that. (laughs) But um, I had, you know, a handful of months of going back and forth. It was a rocky relationship. Both of us had tons of baggage. We were both new to this. And I finally decided when I was going to move back to Alaska and literally still thinking I was going to be ex-gay, but in my heart I was like, I give up, you know. So I started calling him again. I was uh, trying to deal with my stuff that I had in storage here in Anchorage and my car and trying to get my feet back on the ground. And lo and behold, he comes up to visit me and moves me, moves me back to Kentucky. And during that time, I was doing lots of soul searching and prayer and journaling and doing word studies in the uh, the New Testament. And I just really came to the conclusion that same-sex love is not a sin, and it's not going to send me to hell, and it's not going to disqualify me from fulfilling the call of God that was on my life. Uh, are you still with the gentleman from Kentucky? Um, we lasted a couple of years, and... Um, mostly because I wasn't getting some stable help uh, with my form of depression, and he couldn't handle that, and I moved on, and um, I got on disability a couple of years after that and moved back to Portland. You mentioned that you were working in ministry and as well as being a professional musician here in Anchorage? Yes. At what point did you start working your musical skills into what is today that your performance piece? Well, um, I started writing gay love songs in uh, about 2006. It was a new thing for me being in love. And I started seeing, you know, a lot of LGBT people that were Christian. And I started thinking of, you know, what it would be like to have all these gay people in heaven. Wow. So I wrote the song, It's Beautiful in Heaven. And uh, and then I wrote this song, it, I'm Flying Over the Ocean, about my partner coming to see me in Alaska. And then I started writing some songs that were more therapeutic, like the one um, uh, that's about identity themes. Uh, they took something from me, a part of my identity, but I'm getting it back is what it is. And, and then the song, I'm Coming Out, is really self-explanatory. It's my coming out anthem. And <laughs> I did a music video about it where I opened doors and come out of closets while I'm singing, it's a lot of fun. Is that video available on your Sunday Driver production website? So Yeah, yeah, it's under there, uh, under media. Or you could also do a YouTube search for it, and you can also do a search for Jason T. Ingram, I-N-G-R-A-M. If you just do I'm Coming Out, Jason T. Ingram, make sure you put the T on there, because there's a gospel artist named Jason Ingram that, that writes songs a lot like mine. <laughs> He's about my age. I thought it'd be funny if one day if, if uh, people think he's the gay one, even though I, I don't do music professionally anymore. You don't do music in itself professionally, or? I don't make money at it anymore. <laughs> and on your site, I see you have an autobiography, LGBT break, pray log, Facebook link, an art gallery, music link, and a film company. What's happening with the film company? Well, the film is basically a long-term project of the identity thief uh, presentations that I've been doing around the country, and I try to get footage from that and footage about my recovery from the XK movement, and one of these days I'm going to finish it and put together a film that's uh, very similar to the movie that came out last year called This Is What Love in Action Looks Like, and hopefully that'll be out here, uh, you know, in the next... Ten years or so, who knows? <laughs> but I do lots of short films uh, from my presentations as well. What do you have planned here for the Anchorage audience? Is this a normal event for you? Well, this is the first time that I'm going to be publicly speaking against specifically the ex gay type work that I sought out while living in Anchorage. So this is going to this is a pretty big deal. I'm not here to like. Ex- expose people. I'm not here to make enemies. I'm not here to um, make these people look bad or to want to shut them down. 
I'm just telling my story and saying, this is what happened. These are their tactics. Um, you know, this is what it's like to try to find the ex-gay movement in a community where there really is none and how many people were trying to help me and some of the absolutely crazy things that they did. So you'll get to hear uh, in detail some of the assignments that I got in these uh, groups that I was in because I was put in the category of men's sexual addiction. And uh, one of the things that raised some controversy was I went on the Anchorage Baptist Temple website that does the recovery work. They have like a version of 12-step groups there called Celebrate Recovery, which is really a super group because they have 12-step groups for substance abuse and alcohol and, you know, even like I think they still have a divorce care group. But their sexual addiction group has a list of some outrageous things that are arrestable, like, you know, being a pedophile, uh, date rape, and things like that are listed in the same as homosexuality. So I was put in that category. Yeah, we've heard national representatives say that pretty much that same thing. And it's a uh, sad state of Anchorage, Alaska, and America when that happens. Yeah. You can go to the uh, Facebook event and you can see that link on there. It's a little hard to navigate when you go to the uh, Celebrate Recovery site at Anchorage Baptist Temple. They might have changed it already because I sent out sort of an open letter to Anchorage Baptist Temple and could ask a lot of things of them. But really, I'm just saying, hey, you know, let's start here. Please do not list being gay as a sexual addiction, especially, you know, listed among, you know, folks that are into illegal, you know, voyeurism, being a pedophile. Gosh, I'm trying to find them online, but I can't find them. I'll get them here in a little bit, okay? So stick with me, and I'll, I'll find the list for you.